China is once again drenched in the rain. While nobody likes the rain, in this country it has gone from mild annoyance to serious problem. With more than 100 cities with populations over 1 million, China has experienced a significant problem – flooding, due to all the construction on former farmland. Instead, China is upgrading its cities to welcome the water rather than block it, rather than constructing significant barriers like the others have done. Take in China's sponge cities while you are comfortable. Let's begin. In urbanization, natural drainage systems are often replaced with artificial ones, which results in urban flooding. The problem is further exacerbated by land cover change accelerating runoff, the concentration of population and property, and possible local climate change. The recent rapid urbanization in China is also viewed as directly responsible. The frequency and impact of China's floods are related to local rainfall. Chinese investments in flood control since the devastating floods of the 1990s have not been beneficial to many cities that suffer from pluvial flooding, as those investments have focused almost exclusively on fluvial flooding. China has more large cities than any other country, with 60% of its 1.4 billion citizens now living in urban areas, replacing vast green space with sprawling buildings and infrastructure has been essential to ensuring they have a place to live, work and play. In a country that regularly experiences heavy storms, many lands that would typically have absorbed rainwater are replaced with surfaces that do the opposite. There's no wonder flooding has become so severe, even in places with excellent drainage. Over two months in 2020, more than 400 rivers across China flooded, much worse than ever before, and at least 50 million people were affected. Furthermore, water shortages are occurring in some cities where water runs off the streets too quickly to reach water systems that are already stretched. The Chinese government's response was to mop up this mess and make many of these areas sponge cities. In this case, rainwater is captured, stored and released when needed in various ways, like, well, like a sponge. A green or grey infrastructure typically combines water treatment, drainage and irrigation with natural or semi-natural areas. While Russia, the US and India have investigated sponge cities, China's program is on an entirely different scale. Prepare yourself for quite a few numbers. In 2015, 16 cities were selected to join the scheme, and another 14 joined a year later. 70% of the rainwater in these 30 cities should be absorbed and reused by 2030 in 80% of them. The world's most populated country will be undergoing drastic changes to its land use, surface and underground infrastructure. China has already made substantial progress despite the massive amount of work that needs to be done in such a short period. China's largest sponge city, Chongqing, has a population of over 16 million. Eco-engineering combines ecological principles with the use of technology to shape and manage the environment that minimizes damage to the environment or actively protects or sustains it. The sponge city concept is represented at the Shanghai Lingang Sponge City Exhibition Center entrance by a multi-layered array of artificial holes and pores. It stands behind Disuiu, a 5.6 square kilometer artificial lake whose role is to explain the complicated concepts of eco-engineering and urban planning for dealing with flooding in big cities. Located on the coast of Shanghai, Lingang New City was selected by the Chinese government in 2016 as a pilot sponge city. It covers about 100 square kilometers. In terms of the number of pilot cities across the country, it is the biggest. In addition to the exhibition center, Sponge City's infrastructure is being shown in the new city. Unveiled last year due to its Sponge City concept, in the past three years, grass ditches, water absorbent sidewalks, garden rooftops, artificial wetlands and water pools have been constructed to store rainwater. To reduce heavy rainwater pooling, 36 kilometers of road have been repaved and concrete sidewalks replaced with water absorbent bricks. The soil absorbs rainwater in grass ditches along the streets rather than going directly to drains. Over 200 hectares of residential neighborhoods in Linggang have been retrofitted. It included placing small underground storage tanks, building underwater water pools in existing gardens and adding grass to parking lots. 
In the new neighbourhoods of the city, the construction standards were written into the regulations. In 2020, a new park in the Tongnan district helped the area recover quickly from the worst storm in 100 years. A little concrete barrier separated the Fu River from land, becoming increasingly vulnerable to flooding until 2019. This barrier is now gone, and when water levels rise, the wetlands are free to flood. It's an impressive network of native plants, trees, ponds, islands and elevated walkways, making it more than just a place for excess water to go. It's a place people want to be in, taking in the view. Furthermore, in Chongqing, the city's sewer and stormwater networks were monitored in real time by an intelligent digital control system. This way, they can control how water flows into the natural environment more precisely, analyze how well the system performs in extreme weather, and use the data to prevent future floods. On the banks of the Yangtze River in the east of the country, Zhenjiang has also become a big sponge producer, as well as rain gardens and creeks that drain and retain water. The city has installed a bioswale system that extends over several kilometers. The channels have sloped sides to channel stormwater inside, where it filters slowly into the ground below, often removing debris and pollutants in the process. In any decent sponge city, you'll also find passable roads, paths and cycleways, all of which allow water to soak directly into the material instead of flooding drainage systems. Concrete and tar surfaces have similar characteristics to polyurethane binders, but with holes that let water through. An average of 4,000 litres of water can be absorbed per square metre each hour, and there are now networks of these across China, from Qinan City to Hangzhou, which will host the 2022 Asian Games. Those events are relevant to this video because the website for the tournament was designed as a sort of sponge city, a great place to soak up the sports atmosphere. An area that was once flat is being transformed into a sprawling eco-park spanning 116 acres. Architectonics, the firm that designed the master plan, says rainwater will be collected, filtered and reused for water features, plumbing, heating and cooling. However, despite all of this hard work, China's sponge cities haven't been able to prevent every flood, including one recent example. Zhengzhou had almost a year's worth of rain in just four days in July 2021, resulting in devastating floods that tragically killed hundreds of people. Over $7 billion was spent by Zhengzhou upgrading flood-prone areas and drainage systems. However, the city's efforts and effectiveness of the program were questioned, as many felt these improvements were utterly overpowered. Meanwhile, Chinese officials pointed out the storm's severity, claiming that no city could have avoided heavy flood damage in such a case. Sponge cities are also only meant to protect against light to moderate storms and floods, which brings us back to our main point. Part of the purpose of the Chinese Sponge City Initiative is to mitigate extensive urban flooding caused by pluvial runoff. In Yangzhou, semi-structured qualitative interviews with relevant professionals were conducted to elucidate critical issues regarding constructing wetlands, or CWs. CWs, due to their political implications, including support from President Xi Jinping, may be a distraction from urban flooding on a more widespread scale. Due to capacity and implementation constraints, CWs may not come to be effective due to these reasons. Piloting of Sponge City remains and better results are expected. There are many options to choose from for a variety of cities and they look great too. We will need more than this to prevent further tragedies as severe events such as the one in Zhengzhou become more common. While that may be true, introducing a sponge strategy of their own or something similar is likely to put most cities on a much firmer footing in the future. So that's about all the time we had today, folks. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to receive instant notifications about our future videos. See you all next time. Adios.